So we've got something really exciting to tell you about, a paper that came out during the lockdown. It's actually a physics paper, but it's about a new form of nitrogen, the element nitrogen. And people are already calling it black nitrogen. I'll explain why in a minute. But before you get too excited about having your own sample, it can only be made at a pressure of 1.4 million atmospheres. That's 1.4 million times higher pressure than it atmospheric pressure in the Earth's surface, and at a temperature a bit over 4,000 degrees Celsius. Right. So it's not an experiment you can do in your kitchen. Nitrogen, N2, exists as a gas at room temperature, and if you cool it down, it forms a liquid. And so chemists everywhere are only familiar with a gas or liquid nitrogen. If you cool it really cold, you can also get a solid, but most chemists have never seen solid nitrogen. Phosphorus, on the other hand, which is in the same group of the periodic table immediately underneath nitrogen, phosphorus has three different forms. It has a white form, which is really reactive. You've seen peat burning it. And then we'll watch what happens. So instantaneously, you can see that fantastic oxidation reaction. Red phosphorus, which is a sort of reddish brown colour, and black phosphorus, which I'd never seen till a couple of years ago when I was giving a lecture in the German city of Aachen. And when I was a bit worried before the lecture and walking round, I saw a case with a sample of black phosphorus and I photographed it for you, the periodic videos viewers, and that's the first time for me to show you. And you can see it really is black. Now in black phosphorus, the atoms of phosphorus are arranged in rings, hexagonal rings, that are joined together like the wire in chicken wire. But unlike chicken wire, they're not flat, but they go up and down because of the angles between the bonds and the phosphorus. Nobody has ever before seen nitrogen in this form. So nobody has seen nitrogen with this structure. Though in theory, nitrogen could form that structure. But usually, the reason that I and everybody else teaches our students is that N2 has the strongest possible bond between two atoms, a so-called triple bond, and any other form of nitrogen would decompose to form N2 gas with a huge release of energy. So you've already seen on some of our videos, when reactions form N2, they release a lot of energy. Our famous barking dog experiment. Whoosh! And rocket fuels. You've seen our rocket engine. And the decomposition of nitrogen triiodide. They all form nitrogen and release energy. Now this experiment, which was explained in the paper, was performed in Germany by a group led by a scientist called Dominique Laniel. They have built a very special piece of apparatus that will generate really high pressures. And the apparatus consists of two pieces of diamond, which are tapered, so they go to a very narrow point, and the end of the point is flattened. When you press the fat ends of the diamonds, you amplify the pressure, so you can generate a really high pressure between the tips. Between the tips, they put a very thin sheet of the metal rhenium and they drilled a tiny hole, only 40 microns, thinner than one of my hairs. In that hole is where they did the experiment. They have a machine for generating pressure. They fill it by putting a very high pressure of nitrogen round the whole apparatus, about 
1,200 atmospheres, so quite a high pressure of nitrogen. And as they start squeezing, the nitrogen solidifies. And when it's solid, it is not very compressible, so they can ramp up the pressure very easily. That's how they get the pressure. But how do they heat it? And the way they heat it is to shine a laser beam, a very intense laser beam, through the diamond onto the sample. And the laser beam can deliver a lot of energy very quickly and heat up the N2 before they have melted the whole of the apparatus. Right. And when they heat it up, the nitrogen bonds get broken. The atoms get really hot, give out a lot of light because they're just so hot. You know how red hot things give out light. And this is much hotter than red hot. When the bonds are broken, they can reform in a different way. And how do they form? What happens? What happens is that at a pressure of about 1.2 million atmospheres, the nitrogen is actually black. And this is the exciting thing. When they heat it up at 1.4 million atmospheres, it suddenly goes transparent. So they have their sample of transparent nitrogen under really high pressure. And the question is, how do you find out what this transparent stuff is made of? How are the nitrogen atoms arranged? Martin, after they've done the experiment and they've had the high pressure and the laser and everything's turned off, does the nitrogen stay in its solid form? Once it's formed, at least for the time of the experiment, everything is stable. How much have they made? Like a thimble full or like how much do you make in this little uh, void? Well, you have a hole that is 40 microns in diameter and the rhenium starts at 200 microns thick and gets squashed. So there's really very, very little. You know, normally we talk about cubic centimetres or millilitres. Here we're talking about a picolitre or perhaps even less, so a tiny, tiny amount. So the question is, how do you find out what it is? And they have two different ways of doing it. The first way is that they've taken their apparatus to a so-called synchrotron. This is a very large piece of equipment, an electron accelerator, which produces very intense pulses of X-rays. And you can use those X-rays to look at the structure of crystals. And the tiny piece of nitrogen, transparent nitrogen they've made, is a crystal. What happens when they shine the X-rays onto the crystal is that the X-rays are diffracted to a series of spots rather like light is diffracted from the back of a CD or DVD. From the pattern of these spots, they can compute what the structure of the solid was that diffracted the X-rays. Have they carried the crystal from where they did the experiment to the synchrotron, or do they do the experiment at the synchrotron? Or is the crystal stable enough that you can put it in a container and carry it around? The experiment's done in the synchrotron, and as far as I know, they take the diffraction pattern as quickly as they can after they've heated with a laser. And there's some nice pictures that Dominique sent to us showing the equipment in situ at the synchrotron. It looks so complicated, I don't even quite know which way the beam goes, but it's pretty impressive. And what did the synchrotron tell them? What had they created? What the synchrotron told them was that the structure of the nitrogen they had formed was exactly the same structure as the structure of black phosphorus, which is why they called the material BPN, BP for black phosphorus and then N for nitrogen. So there's no actual phosphorus in there. The BP just stands for this is like black phosphorus. 
Yes, precisely. No phosphorus in it at all. It just has the same structure. Some journalists who've reported it simplified it and called it black nitrogen, which is a bit silly since it's transparent and the light can get through. But it was black for a while and then it went transparent. What's that about? The solid nitrogen from which it's formed is black because it has some other structure and I don't know precisely why it's black. But the fact that the BP nitrogen is colourless is really interesting. They believe the reason is that in black phosphorus, which is really black, the bonds between each phosphorus atom are the same length. But in the nitrogen form, some of the nitrogen atoms are closer together than other ones. And this means that the electrons in the black nitrogen is arranged in a different way from the electrons in black phosphorus. And for physicists, that's really very interesting. So, Professor, I can see why the physicists are excited just because they've seen something for the first time, but is there any usefulness to this or applications like with graphene and things like that? I think the answer is that there is no application for black nitrogen as it is, but it might have some use because in the sense that it will allow people to understand the behaviour of nitrogen and allow them to design new materials which contain some nitrogen and perhaps some phosphorus or some other element so that they can get different electronic properties. But from the point of view of the chemists, I think it is very interesting because we as chemists usually don't think very much about high pressures. For us, 200 atmospheres is already a really high pressure. And we never really think much about how our elements behave when they're at a million atmospheres pressure. And so I think what this experiment will do is make me be slightly less dogmatic when I say nitrogen only exists as N2. And for some of you who are away from school because of lockdown, when you go back, you can say to your teachers, you're wrong. There isn't just N2. There's a new form that's been discovered. Freezing a liquid nitrogen. I'd never tried freezing a banana. 